Hi guys, how's it going? It's Matt here from Devious Games, and today I'm bringing you a quick tutorial on how to use Cinema 4D and how to create a very basic intro. So, I'm using Cinema 4D R13 edition. So, let's just jump right in. To begin with, I'm going to use MoGraph. So, you need to click at the top, click MoGraph, and click Mo Text. This will bring up a text box that should appear in the middle. And it, yeah, here we go. Sorry, for some reason it doesn't like me recording. So here we have, in the bottom right hand corner here, you will see that um, we have a box and it says Mo Text and then it says Basic Keyword Object Caps all and all of that. If that doesn't come up, you just need to click on the Mo Text here and that will appear. Under Object and then Text, you then write what you want. So I'm going to write Unfallen as I'm what needing to make an intro for them at the moment. This won't be the intro that I use for them, but it's a good tutorial for you guys. So here we go, here we have it. To change the text you just go into font. A drop down list will or a massive list will appear. You can scroll through and pick the one that you so choose or so want. I'm just gonna jump straight in and go for hurry up. So unfortunately that doesn't look much like a COD clan's um, writing, but you know, I'm I'm just gonna Okay, we'll go uh, we want something bulky. I'm gonna go for razor. Oh So I've got the razor header fonts here. So just go for them there. I don't know what that's doing, but that should be fine. So we have this. Now to add more depth to these 3D thing like figures, just go like that. It won't look very 3D like 3D at the moment, but that will come in due course. So I'm going to put mine to about 67. Now I'm going to go to caps and go start cap fillet cap, and this just adds a nice bevel edge to it. I'm going to have a radius of about five centimeters, which is standard. And if you come to the top of the screen, and you will see three kind of movie player click the left one or press um, control and R and it will bring up this view it will only be able to see from this view but this will be it. this is what it's going to look like currently to manipulate the view use the buttons in the top right corner here drag on that to move it that one's to pan till this one's to rotate and this one's zoom as you can see so I'm going to want to add a bit of colour to this so to add colour you come to the bottom left and you have this bar at the bottom, double click and it will create a, a white orb under colour, click in the colour box choose the colour you want and I've chosen red then I like to add a bit of reflection, so click on the reflection tab click tick don't need to change the colour, change the brightness to around 10 to 20, I keep it on 14 change the texture to be Fresnel and change the mix strength to be about 18 so this will create a nice glossy finish. So say you only want that to be on a certain letter. If you just select the mode text and press C, it will now go like that. You have a plus icon, click that, come up with one, click that again, unfallen, click that, and it will come up with each individual letter. So say I want to have the red just on the eight three, I will click on the red circle, drag it, and let go on the three. As you can see, it's colored that. So I'm now going to quickly create a black. If you're going to create another colour, remember that it will be left in the reflection tab, so you need to go back into the colour tab, change that to black, then do the reflection all over again. It won't save your previous reflection, it will just save the fact that you were there last. So I'm not going to be too accurate with those settings, I'm just going to dive straight in and get these done. So for each individual one, you just drag and drop the colour onto the letters. It's really simple and it can create some really good effects if you definitely want to highlight a certain letter or certain words. So if I just press Ctrl and R once again and it will bring this view up. As you can see obviously from different angles the lighting looks different, the reflections are different and you can see different amounts of letters so you'll need to bear that in mind when you come to lighting it and when you come to record. So if I now group that back together and I want to have an effect on it. You go MoGraph, Poly Effects. This is the reason that I use the MoTeXt as it enables you to do this. 
drag and drop that onto the mode text and minimize that. Now, with pulley effect selected, click on MoGraph again and go to random effector. Under the effector tab, you want to use the random. So that's done that. Drag that onto poly effects. Now we can change the strength if you have random selected under the effector parameter tab. So it's under effector and you can change the strength. Now to change how that all works, you want to go into fall off and change that into a sphere. That changes the fall off to a sphere. Now using the red line and the correct tool, the correct tool being this one here, it's the shortcut of E. Drag that along into the roughly the middle and then use the scaling tool which has a shortcut of T and just drag that up so it's roughly the same size as your text. Now if we click back on random, go on effector again, this enables us to change the like the size of the explosion of the text. Now if we also would like to continue to change that, we then need to go into parameter and under P, X, Y and Z, um, you just need to drag these up absolutely miles so that they're really far out giving you a much better effect when you choose to start keyframing. So I'm just going to drag these up and up. You can just type numbers but I'm just going to drag for now. So as you can see these are a lot thinner spread out. To add a ca um, Now if we just quickly drag that back round, that's what it will look like but it will go a bit slower. Now we need to add some lights. So I'm just going to add a simple light, just that. You need to use the move tool which is a shortcut of E. I'm just going to drag that out so it's roughly in front just so it gives a nice colouring a nice kind of evenish light. I'll just add one more, just click it again. And I'll just add this one a bit higher up just to kind of give that lighting, rotating it using the R tool. Then need to go around to the side and use the red one so it kind of points down at it. Now if we kind of rotate back around to the front, we've got nice text looking pretty sweet might just slide that along a bit because as you can see the light was a bit unbalanced now if we press that again we've got nice balanced light throughout so to add the camera we go here hold down click camera so as you can see we now have these white lines to get rid of them just press that kind of pixel thing in the top right hand corner next to camera that enables you to be inside the camera it's almost as though you are the camera so to start off with we need to drag this to our first position. So say I want my first position to be here, drag it here and press the keyframe tool in the bottom left or bottom middle. It's a red, it's a key with a red circle. Press it once you'll have a blue square appear there. Now where you want the camera to move next, I'm going to move that to 50 frames and just move that over to here. So now we're here we just press that again. Now for step three I'm just going to zoom out and give you a nice wide view of the intro from here. So that white path you can see is the path that your in, uh, camera will be following. So if I just press keyframe once more after dragging that to say 85 frames. So you can make the frame distance longer by going here and typing say 110 then you just need to drag this bar along so you can see all 110 frames so as you can see if I press play this is what it will look like and it obviously hasn't registered that last move I'm not too sure why maybe oh, I didn't have the camera selected did I so I'll just go and redo that last move. Zoom out a bit. And kind of just leave it zoomed in nicely. Press keyframe and hopefully this will now decide it wants to work. 
Alright, so if I hit play, it will go across, get to 50, and then come out to there. So that's looking quite nice already, and all we've got left to do is to have it with the effects. So you want to click on the random effector again, put the strength up to 100%, and now instead of using the keyframe tool down here, you want to go parameter, and control click on the P next to the X, Y, and Z. That will now keyframe that. Drag it along to the next part, so I'm having that at 50, which is where my next one is, and repeat the process of uh, control clicking. Now my next one was at 85, so one thing I forgot to do on the previous one was you just need to bring the effects down between there and the last one. So my last one was at 85 frames. So strength at zero, parameter, control, control, control. Now as we can see here, it should, if it works, which it doesn't want to. But that in thick. I know why I was doing that wrong. I was doing the X axis, wasn't I? Right. So about that. So uh, zero frames. We need to instead of doing the parameter, you need to go on strength. Keyframe that. Jump straight to 80 frames. And drag it to zero and keyframe it there. Now, as you can see, as we go along, they pull together and create that. So this isn't really the camera angle you'd want. It looks okay, I would normally go in to one side and then come out just in front so it collects in front of you. But I'm quite happy with this. Now to render this, you want to click on render settings or control B. And you want to change the width to 1920 if you are uploading in HD and the height to 1080. Now under save you want to change the format to a QuickTime movie or an AVI movie. File name, you want to just go into whatever you want it to be called. I'm going to call mine um, test. Press save. That's all that you need to do there. You can fiddle around with some more settings, but I don't normally. Then to render, you just hit Shift R and it will go through rendering your intro and it will look a bit like this. But as you can see, it's only rendered one frame. The reason being is you need to go back into output and change it from frame one to however many frames you have. So I'm going to do mine to 90, even though mine's 110 frames long. My last effect happens at 85, so I'm going to go to 90 just to give me a bit of a tail off. I hit it. Overwrite, yes. And you need to remember just to check that every time you um, go to render, just in case. So this will now render out this whole intro. As you can see, these are all the individual frames. It will get compressed into a film and dumped in that folder. So once this is all done, I will show you what it looks like. So this intro you can use for anyone. Um, you can actually use the same intro over and over. You just got to change the text. So it's nearly done. It's done 69, 70 frames out of 90. Um, also, the less frames, the quicker it will render. Also, the less textures you have, the quicker it will render. Um, and yeah. So, here we go. It is rendered. I can now quit that. That's picture view done. Open, films, test. And here we have it. Here is the test. And picture gallery cannot open it. Great. Sorry about all of the mishaps so far, I'm going to guess. Um, Windows Media Player, let's try that. Okay. You may find that you cannot open it with anything other than, say, Vegas Pro. Hopefully it'll open with Vegas Pro. This is what I use for my editing. Um, this is I haven't actually made an intro like this for a while now, so I'm sorry this has been a bit bitty and everything. But here we go. So this is what it will look like. Um, obviously this isn't kind of rendered or anything. But that is what you will get at the beginning of your video. You can 
fiddle around with it, change the timings just by pressing control and going like that, therefore slowing it up. But I would suggest that if you are going to slow it up like that, you just make it more frames in Cinema 4D as that will make it smoother. So guys, hope you've enjoyed this. If you'd like to know anything else about Cinema 4D, Photoshop or um, Sony Vegas Pro, please let me know in the comments or let us know some other way. I've been Matt, you've been awesome, and I'll see you next time. Adios.